um, and go right ahead, Goldie. Okay. The West Side had many small synagogues, each representing the city or the village from where the people came in Europe. Mm -hmm. the, the Jewish settlers spoke Yiddish. They did not know English. However, they did learn it at a later time. At the home of, Miss, of Reverend and Mrs. Jacob Gordon, some 50 people gathered in 1928 because the women felt that there was no Hebrew school for the children in the neighborhood. And they formed a neighborhood school. It was at Colfax and Mead Street. Now, Rabbi Manuel Lederman was, re, was recommended by his friend in the yeshiva in Chicago, Maurice Solomon, who was a student there and who later became Rabbi Lederman's brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. On October 25th, 1932, a delegation of men from the Alliance went down to Union Station where they met Rabbi Lederman and his future brother-in-law when they got off the train. Rabbi Lederman was immediately dearly accepted by his people. He took the job at the Alliance and he worked diligently for many, many years. He was 23 years old when he arrived in Denver. He was born on August 25th, 1909 in New York City, and he grew up in Chicago. He immediately won the hearts of the congregation. Morris Cohn was elected president of the congregation in 1932, a position he held for 15 years. The daily Talmud Torah on Sunday school officially opened in 1932, an observant teacher was hired to teach the children, and Rabbi Lederman would fill in if the teacher was absent, if the teacher had to go out of town or whatever reason there might have been. He also instituted daily morning and evening services. The Talmud Torah flourished as children enrolled and many families became members of the congregation. There was a slight tuition charge but no child was turned away, regardless of his family, his or her family to, was able to pay. A group of 30 men, organized by Chaim Cohen, contributed monthly so that Rabbi Lederman and his new bride, Bess Mellon of Kansas City, could be paid. The congregation did not have enough money to pay them. The Mead Street building became free of indebted indebtedness in 1937. The sisterhood projects for the benefit of the synagogue were many. They included adult education classes, the gift shop, flowers on the pulpit for Shabbos and holidays, the library, and continuous beautif beautification and refurbishing. Monthly luncheons were held and they were beautiful with Bess Lederman's beautiful, outstanding programming. The Men's Club was organized in 1939 for social and cultural purposes. Functions of the Men's Club included raffles, charitable projects, participation in graduations, and trustees for the high holidays. Cantor Jacob Lefkowitz was hired in 1941, and he thrilled the congregation with his melodious voice and his creative tunes. He was with us for 15 years. He also prepared the boys for their bar mitzvahs. The Alliance was bustling with activities, including weddings, bar mitzvahs, Friday night services, and the annual Talmud Torah dinner. During the presidency of Abe Solomon, the congregation was outgrowing the Meat Street facility. Plans were made for the construction of the beautiful new building 
at West Canaeus Place and Stewart Street. A. Perlmutter, a prominent member of the congregation, was the builder. The building was completed in 1952, dedicated in 1953, and the mortgage was lifted at a festive ceremony in January of 1958. The Sunday school was successful. Many, many parents brought their children to, to attend Sunday school. The festivities kept going on and on as we moved into the beautiful new building. The Cookerama, a cooking school, was an idea conceived by Mary Christman and inaugurated in 1953. Hundreds of women flocked to the annual event to witness demonstrations of Jewish cooking and to purchase bread and pastries prepared by the Sisterhood ladies. The kitchen was lovingly cared for by Fanny Zarevnik, Lil Spire, Lois Weiner, Lila, excuse me, Lola Weiner, and Frida Toltz, and Jean Olshansky. The erudite Mr. A.B. Cohen served as principal of the Talmud Torah and also taught Hebrew classes from the time of his arrival in 1939 until illness prevented him from working any longer in 1977. Mr. A. Kirstein, a very fine gentleman, served as principal of the Sunday school, and he taught classes on Sunday morning. Elta, El, Elta M. L. Cohen was a devoted Alliance secretary during most of her lifetime. She painstakingly took care of high holiday seating and from, took charge of ordering names for the memorial tablets. Elta was the symbol of continuity of our congregation. Others who served diligently in the office were Reba Yaman, Tilly Batten, Rose Paper, Lil Sherman, Eileen Drucker, Bobby Grossman, Sheila Lerner, and Jerry David. Those names were there and they spanned over many years. In 1980, the Alliance Highlights became a monthly publication and it continued to be a major link between the synagogue and the congregation. Editors of the Highlights included Martha Stover, Rose Brown, Charlene Sachter, and Sarah Gilbert. Rabbi Lederman reached great heights as spiritual leader, speaker, teacher, and friend to many, many people. His first overseas trip was in 1948 when he was a delegate to the World Zionist Congregation in Basel, Switzerland. After World War II, the rabbi, his wife, and children spent one year in Paris. His Paris-based duty as representative of the Jewish of the Joint Distribution Committee involved rehabilitation for the thousands of displaced Jewish people whom he helped to who he helped to settle in Israel. When he completed his mission, the congregation, the congregation joyfully welcomed him and his family back to Denver. Rabbi Lederman took great pride in his wife, Bess, and in their children. Paul Samuel Lederman was born in 1934, and Miral Gita Lederman Eucles was born in September of 1939. Paul was a rabbi who lived in Israel with his wife Shula, and they had three children. Miral and her husband Jack Eucles lived in New York for many years, but more recently they moved to Jerusalem, where they live now. They also have three children, many grandchildren. Rabbi and Mrs. Lederman traveled to Israel numerous times to visit their children and grandchildren. Always the congregation eagerly awaited their return to hear the rabbi's exciting reports about the news in Israel. Rabbi Lederman became a giant among men, not only because of his stature, but because 
of his ability to discuss any subject from psychiatry to golf, from baseball to politics, from Zionism to music to Talmud. He received many local, national, and international awards for his outstanding service, whilst never ever neglecting his duties at the synagogue. The rabbi announced his plans for retirement in 1979. It was a terrible time for the congregation. We did not want him to leave. We did not want him to retire. He was named Rabbi Emeritus. After his retirement, he continued to be helpful to the congregation, and he was an adjunct professor of philosophy at the, at the University of Colorado at Denver. On Saturday, November 23, 1989, Rabbi Lederman suffered a massive coronary attack, and on Monday evening, November 27, 1989, at 10 o'clock p.m., our beloved giant was gone. His passing created a void that lingers. Mrs. Lederman moved to Jerusalem to be closer to her children. On April 12, 1994, the Trauma Center of Denver General Hospital was named the Rabbi Manuel Lederman Regional Trauma Center. Unfortunately, that name is no longer on the building at Denver General Hospital. It was there for 25 years. The very popular Rabbi Daniel Goldberger, who had been a prominent rabbi in Denver for 30 years, agreed to accept the spiritual leadership of our congregation after Rabbi Lederman's retirement. Many members joined the synagogue in support of Rabbi Goldberger. He and his wife, Ida, a Chicago native and a delightful Rebbitzin, moved to the west side to be closer to the synagogue. Rabbi Goldberger's congregation and, under, and people he met at the Alliance made him highly respected throughout the community. He was born in 1924 in New York City, and he grew up in Pennsylvania. He was ordained at the Hebrew Theological College of Chicago, and he served the Beth Joseph Congregation in Denver from 1951 to 1971. Rabbi Goldberger was in private practice as a marriage and family counselor from 1972 to 1979, prior to assuming his duties at the Alliance. He is the recipient of many special awards. His wise and dedicated leadership at the congregation until his retirement was gratefully acknowledged at the annual dinner in that year. The, Gold, the Goldbergers had many friends in the community, both east side and west side. 